Hey, uh, welcome to this lecture series on environment and ecology presented by Mentors for IAS in association with Namak APSC and Bangalore IAS Academy. Now, when it comes to your civil services examination or any state public service examination, environment and ecology is actually a very important subject. Uh, of course, when it comes to your civil services examination, you do have several topics or several subjects such as the Indian constitution, the Indian economy, geography, history, and obviously environment and ecology, science, aptitude, and current affairs, which is one of the most important subjects or topics as of today with respect to your civil services examination. Now, uh, specifically talking about your civil services examination, that is your prelims. Every year, you get anywhere from 15 to 20 questions from environment and ecology, which sums up to around 30 to 40 marks. And hence, there's absolutely no way that you can actually ignore this subject. As you can see here, in 2013, you had 17 questions, 15, 2015, 22 questions. In 2018, you had 12 questions. And last year, in 2019, you had around 21 questions. So on an average, you can always expect anywhere from 15 to 20 questions. So uh, again, when it comes to your uh, uh, civil services examination, uh, specifically talking about environment and ecology, uh, the kind of questions that you get in environment and ecology can be broadly classified into five categories. That is, you might get questions based on facts, such as say national parks, endangered species, flora and fauna, etc. You may get questions based on certain concepts like climate change, pollution, ozone layer depletion, or you may have questions, certain questions on institutions or organizations in India or uh, international organizations or certain legislative measures that we are taking in order to prevent environmental degradation in India or at the international level. Or you may also have certain questions based on research and development in the field of environment. And finally, the most important uh, subject or topic within environment and ecology, I mean, not within environment and ecology, but there's a lot of focus which is put on current affairs when it comes to environment and ecology, so which is very, very important. So uh, since this is our first class or first video with respect to environment and ecology, uh, I'll just briefly go through the different topics that we'll be covering uh, over the weeks. And uh, the hope is that even though the videos are restricted to around 10 to 15 minutes, we will cover up the entire subject of environment and ecology uh, thoroughly so that it will help you and it should help you in your preparation for your civil services examination. So generally, we'll always start off with certain terms and concepts which are actually important uh, for you to understand uh, other concepts within the subject of environment and, environment and ecology. So we'll always start off with certain terms and concepts. So once you are done with that, once we are done with that, we'll move on to ecosystem where we'll classify the ecosystems into terrestrial ecosystems. Uh, then we'll classify them into say different biomes such as forests, grasslands, the tundra, the taiga, different types of um, terrestrial ecosystems that we have. Then we will classify the marine ecosystems into freshwater or marine ecosystems. Then we will move on to wetlands, the importance of wetlands, what is the function or the role of wetlands when it comes to uh, the ecological balance and environment. Then we will move on to biodiversity, the importance of biodiversity, uh, what are certain steps need that need to be taken in order to conserve this biodiversity, what is the importance of biodiversity where do you have biodiversity uh, regions which are very rich in biodiversity we will be covering such topics especially current affairs related topics regarding biodiversity is very important then we can move on to say uh, conventions regarding biodiversity, certain legislative measures which are being taken in India and also at the uh, international level uh, where India is going to collaborate with other nations or with other international organizations to conserve biodiversity at an international level. Uh, finally, uh, we will also go through environmental degradation and pollution. Now, this is once again a very, very important topic, not just with respect to prelims, but also means. So the types of environmental degradation, the different sources of pollution that is taking place and what are the steps that we are taking at the national level, especially at the national level. State level, unless you're preparing for uh, 
uh, state public service uh, examinations it is not important that you go through the legislative measures the actions that is taken at the state level but obviously it's very important that you understand what are the different steps which are taken at the national level and then obviously we'll go through certain important concepts such as ozone layer depletion the climate change the united nations framework convention on climate change certain other important topics which will also be covered as we go on ahead so i hope you've got a brief understanding of uh, what we will be covering through this lecture series in uh, environment and ecology so if you would ask me what should be your uh, main source uh, for uh, environment and ecology i would not specify on any one particular book uh, any good book any good book which covers the entire subject especially your current affairs which is updated would do it will do good it will help you in your preparation for your examination i will basically be depending upon uh, our institute's book that is environment and ecology by mentors for is.com you could also make use of uh, environment book by shankar is or by majid hussain they are also absolutely good so any good book is thorough apart from that you should also read your newspapers every day which will again help you to uh, update your uh, 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 important issues and aspects regarding science sorry uh, environment and ecology so if this is clear uh, uh, i would like to start uh, today basically with certain terms and concepts which i have already uh, told you about which are important in the beginning itself so the first topic that we will take up today is ecology now i'm pretty sure everybody makes use of this particular term ecology in your everyday conversation and everyday life but for us it is important that we go slightly we go slightly deeper into this term which is known as ecology now this particular word that is ecology is derived from two different greek words oikos meaning home and logos meaning study so ecology literally means the study of our home environment since it is a study of our home environment it is also considered to be a branch of biology which studies the organisms the environment in which the organisms live and also how these organisms interact with each other and their environment so that is what is basically Uh, basically is done when it comes to the study of the home environment so if we are going to study the home environment this can be broken down at six levels this study of home, home environment can be done at an individual level it can be done at the level of a population that is group of organisms usually of same species occupying a defined area it can be done at the community level such as a grassland community which includes many populations of various species it can be done at the level of the ecosystem or a biome or finally at the level of the biosphere itself so if this simple term ecology is clear to you uh, it also makes sense that we talk about another important term known as ecological footprint so simply put uh, this ecological footprint is nothing but the measure it is nothing but the measure of the human demand on nature meaning the amount of nature which is required to sustain a person a city a nation or the entire world itself so more the consumption of natural resources larger will be the ecological footprint and more will be the environmental degradation so at present our ecological footprint is somewhere around 1.7 ideally it should be around 1 but we are actually consuming the earth's resources faster than the rate at which earth can replenish meaning this development this growth is not sustainable we are consuming the earth's resources at a rate much faster than the earth can replenish and therefore our ecological footprint ideally which should have been one is 1.7 and this is leading to earth's degradation so the reason it is important for us to study ecological footprint is because it helps us to understand the concept of ecology when it comes to conservation of environment and also judicious use of resources the next topic that we will take up today the next term that we will take up today is the ecosystem 
So very simple. The ecosystem is defined as a structural and functional unit of biosphere which may vary in size and nature. So depending upon the size and nature, uh, it will depend. But the functional unit of the biosphere is ecosystem. So obviously what I'm trying to say is when several ecosystems come together, that is when you get your biosphere. So this ecosystem is nothing but a community of living organisms, which is made up of plants, trees, animals, microorganisms, living in conjunction with non-living things in the environment. So what I'm trying to say is that this ecosystem is nothing but biotic components plus abiotic components living together that is living things and non-living things which interact with each other and this interaction between them is taking place through nutrient cycles and energy flows what are these nutrient cycles and energy flows we will take it up later on in this lecture series so this interaction is as of today you can just understand the interaction between biotic and abiotic components is taking place through energy flow and the nutrient cycles that is taking place over here. Therefore, if any part of the ecosystem is damaged or disappears, it is safe to say that this effect will be felt in the entire ecosystem itself. So if any part of the ecosystem is affected, that effect will be felt across the entire ecosystem. The next topic or the next term is environment. Again, very simple. This environment is nothing but the sum total of all living things, non-living things and everything in between and around them. So when you put all the ecosystems in a region together, that is when you get an environment and obviously your environment makes up for the biosphere. See, maybe it is a bit confusing for you at this level since we've already discussed what is an ecology, what is the ecosystem, what is the environment. To uh, put it in a very simple example, you can imagine your school. You can take your school as the environment. So, if the school represents the environment, you can say that the students and the teachers make up for the biotic components. Whereas, the tables, chairs, the books, all these things make up for the abiotic components. Now, earlier when defining ecosystem, I said that ecosystem is nothing but the combination of biotic components and abiotic components and where they interact with each other. Then you might take your class, a classroom as the ecosystem. So the classroom is your ecosystem where the biotic components, that is the schools and that is your students and teachers will interact with each other along with abiotic components such as your books, tables, your board and many other things over there. So, if I have to put ecology, ecosystem and environment into one place using this analogy, then ecology will be the study of the relationship between the students and the school where the students make up for the biotic components and the school makes up for the environment. So if school is the environment, ecology will be the study between the relationship between the students and the school, that is the environment. So that is why I actually said that this environment is nothing but the sum total of all the living things and non-living things and everything in between and around them. And when you put everything together, that is when you get the entire environment. So uh, here you can also make a note of the World Environment Day. Every year the World Environment Day is celebrated on uh, 5th June and this is an initiative of the United Nations in order to encourage worldwide, in order to encourage worldwide awareness and action to protect our environment. So every year the World Environment Day is celebrated on 5th June. In 2019, the theme for the World Environment Day was air pollution. I mean, obviously, uh, considering that uh, day by day, uh, there is increase in air pollution and there is a necessity to combat this particular problem. So maybe in 2020, you can actually make a note of what is the theme of the World Environment Day on 5th of June. The next term that we'll take up for today is uh, a habitat. So again, very simple. These are all uh, terms and concepts that we have already studied in school. So this is nothing but uh, brush up. Since this is the first video, it will help you to you know brush up certain terms and concepts. So this habitat uh, refers to the natural environment in which a particular species of organism may live 
and is characterized by both physical and biological features so since the organisms of a species live in a habitat they should be able to find water food shelter and also mates for reproduction so what i'm trying to say is please remember the habitat makes up for the environment of the species but not all environments can be habitats because a habitat should always support life but it is not always necessary that environment will support life meaning within the environment where life is supported where you do have species living and surviving and carrying on their basic activities every day that becomes the habitat habitat is nothing but the address the place where organisms or species live so habitat when you have a habitat within the environment where organisms live that is that important part of ecosystem where organisms are carrying on their everyday life so there is one important question that you have to understand here the question is that can a habitat have more than one species the answer is yes a habitat any given habitat may contain different species but each species needs to have a different niche within the habitat now what is a niche now these are certain other terms and concepts which we will take up in the uh, next class or the next video which is to come up so uh, this is just a question which uh, was asked in upsc uh, some years back so this is a per this is pertaining uh, to the terms and concept that we have already covered in this video so the question was which one of the following is the best description uh, uh, is best description of the term ecosystem so what did i tell you ecosystem is nothing but biotic and abiotic components put together so if you take option a a community of organisms interacting with one another no it is community of organisms interacting with one another as well as abiotic components it is not only the interaction between biotic components then option b says that part of earth which is inhabited by living organisms no that is the habitat uh, habitat is where you have living organisms habiting uh, inhabiting a particular region uh, option d says a flora and fauna of a geographical area absolutely not it is the biotic abiotic components interacting with each other so option c is the best description of the ecosystem considering the uh, uh, other three where option c says a community of organisms together with the environment where the environment will make up for biotic and abiotic components within which they live so option c is the correct answer so i hope you have uh, learned something useful which will help in your preparation for your uh, civil services examination so since this being the uh, first uh, video we will continue with more videos on environment and ecology we'll take up where we'll take up more terms and concepts and other things which are important for your preparation for your civil services examination as well as your various uh, state public services examination so uh, i hope this has been beneficial thank you very much for uh, watching uh, do try and follow and for uh, any further information you can always contact us at the uh, uh, the contact numbers given below so thank you have a good day